Greetings to all of humanity. It's really a joy, it's a pleasure. It's my honor to be greeting you. Always bringing this message of emancipation to you, pointing you to look inwardly, to discover that your real identity is your divinity. And everything I would have just said there to you has been taught to Neville Gala by Abdullah, the black mystic from Ethiopia. And Neville put what Abdullah was teaching him to walk in his life and prove for himself that he can create his reality and that he can do it consciously. And he decided to lecture to the world, teaching each and everyone that God is their imagination and that they can put their imagination to work to prove that the creator in man is man's imagination. Also, he laid down the fact that the Bible addresses the human mind and must be interpreted psychologically. That the Bible is not literal, neither is it secular history. For the Bible have no reference to anyone who existed thousands of years ago or to any actual event that would have taken place on earth thousands of years ago. From the beginning to the ending of the Bible, it's all a great psychological drama. It all has to do with the human psyche. And that is what brings me to my topic concerning Kenneth Copeland and Neville Gallen. And how Kenneth Copeland and many of these prosperity preachers have been applying the principles of what Abdullah would have taught Neville Gallen, but they are doing it under the disguise of the Jesus and Mary story, knowing that it is not literal, neither is it secular history. But many of them, by the time they would have discovered the truth that the Bible is not secular history and that the Bible is not literal, they didn't want to lose their congregation, they didn't want to lose their following, so they realized that there's too much at stake. And I'm speaking from experience in terms of, I would have had ex an experience with a preacher who told me that he had too much to lose because he was overseeing over seven churches and that man, he's an Adventist, he lives right in this country right now, okay? And he is not, he's not a, 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 a Vincentian because I'm living in St. Vincent and Grenadines. He actually came from Barbados with his Barbados accent, that's how I know. And he's here living a lavish life while there's so many people who are going to the Adventist church and living in dirt poor poverty. And so, my brother and my sisters, there are many who, when they've been confronted with the truth concerning the Bible and they see the truth, they use it to benefit themselves while keeping the masses in darkness and I'm not here to point fingers or to blame anyone because every one of us has been given a choice and it is what you choose to do with your life. Now when you listen to people like Kenneth Copeland who encourage their congregation to laugh, do you realize the laughter is the greatest medicine and when you understand the teaching that Neville God had received from Abdullah you realize that it enabled him to write a book called Feeling is the Secret and a lot of these preachers who would have listened to Reverend Ike and even Neville Gaden and they would have taken the teaching of the law to fit their organization even before Neville leave the scene, he spoke about it, that ministers would take the teaching, which is the law, and they would use it to further their organizational structures. But one thing that they can use to do such is the promise. Because the promise can never be known intellectually. It must be experienced. And it is because of the experience of the, of the promise in my life why I am actually here doing this video. And everything I would say to you, it would never be based on theory. It's always based on my experience. And if you listen to me, you realize I'm not a, an intellectual. All I'm doing is testifying of my experience and how it have helped me 
to have a mindset whereby I want to uplift all of humanity by pointing each and every one to look inwardly to discover that their real identity is their divinity. So when I let me get back to Kenneth Copeland. I remember when I was a part of secular Christianity, Kenneth Copeland, Crawford Dalla, and many of these other prosperity preachers, they were encouraging the people to stretch their hands out in an upright way and to say, money, come on to me. Now, I remember when they brought that to the church I was attending at the time, I was very reluctant to do it. And I had doubt in me still because I couldn't understand it. But many people were gullible. They would, they would do it and they would believe it. And I know of a good brother of mine who, well, he have passed on now. He would have embraced the teaching of Crawford Dalla and Kenneth Copeland and the other prosperity preachers. And he used to preach and sometimes he'd use the pulpit to throw stone at me, you know, to say the people who don't want to believe in prosperity and so on, you know, they always look shabby and definitely I used to look real shabby and nothing seems to work for me and he used to say that, you know, they're working overtime and nothing happening for them and I definitely used to be working overtime at my job at the post office and all of these things and nothing was happening to me but because I was saying to him, yes, I believe in prosperity but I believe that there are conditions, I used to say that to him and to cut a long story short, he flourished for a while and to cut a long story short again he didn't live long enough to even enjoy it. He died from HIV because when the life starts, you know, good life, you know. I remember times I used to be uh, coming from church late at night, walking, and I would see this luxurious vehicle stop at my, feet, at my feet. And I wonder who knew me. That time of night to give me a ride, and sometimes it used to be that same brother who used to give me a ride. And when he, when he got sick, I tried my best to talk to, that, to him to encourage him to have faith and he just couldn't have faith in the Jesus that he was talking about. I was encouraging him to take the medication to cure, to, to help him with the, with the HIV and everything and he, he didn't even listen. He, like he gave up totally. He lost everything he had. he had. He had more than one vehicles, okay? And he had his own business and everything and he lose all of that because why? He was doing it but he wasn't conscious of what he was doing. So many people are going to church and go, going on their knees and praying to Jesus for certain things and they see certain things manifest in their life and they don't understand the science of the mind and they don't understand how energy vibration and frequency works and they look up to these men who are still having them creating things in their life unconsciously when we are the ones who are teaching the people to manifest consciously like Neville teach the world to confess to, to manifest I mean consciously Abdullah taught the world also to manifest consciously also and Neville said that Abdullah taught him true Christianity so true Christianity is pointing to look inwardly to discover that your real identity is your divinity while false Christianity is teaching you to look outwardly to believe in a God or power or some creative power outside of yourself. But remember that the kingdom of God is within you. Luke 17, 21 says that. And then in Matthew 6, 33, it is said also that when you seek first the kingdom of God, which means you seek to know yourself first, your innermost essence, that you will discover the secret of creation and you'll be able to create your reality consciously. That's why he says that all these things will be added unto you. But we see people like Kenneth Copeland, they all are using the law to get all the material things in the world, like getting their private jet, living in their mansions, driving the best cars, but they are doing it in a way to make the people believe that there's a power outside of themselves. To still make the people live in guilt, shame, and condemnation because they believe in a savior outside of themselves. And they believe that a virgin woman did give birth to a son over 2,000 years ago who died on a cross for their sins, not knowing that sin 
actually mean ignorance and the only fundamental sin there is in this world is not knowing who you are because we all was born in a state of amnesia which is a state of forgetfulness that's why none of us cannot remember when we were one week old or one month old or even 12 months old because we're born in that state of amnesia. So when the Bible says that you were born in sin and shape in iniquity, it is speaking of you being born in a state of forgetfulness and you're seeking to know who you are. So my brother and my sisters, when you come to realize that the creator in man, our God in man, is my imagination, then you will understand how come the people who go to church and believe in a God outside of themselves, how they can manifest things in their life, and those of us who do not believe in a God outside of ourselves, and who do not believe in, in the Jesus story, how we can manifest also. Because most of the time, people go to church and they testify of things they get, like a vehicle. But if that was God's blessings in their life, what about the person who is the dealer, who owns thousands, and what about the person who is the inventor who first had the idea? If you look around, you realize all of the great things that have been invented in this world, they were never invented by a Christian. You look at the airplane, it didn't come by a Christian. You look at the computer, it didn't come by a Christian. You look at the internet. You look at all of these things that we need to make this world a better place and to uplift humanity, it didn't come by a Christian. Now, they talk about healing and all of these things and the bible says in i think in mark 16 that all these signs are supposed to follow them but when the news came across concerning covid whether is it a, a scamdemic or a pandemic all of these churches closed down because they had to listen to the government and they start then the same church people had to wear masses and then they couldn't pray and heal the people and if what they're teaching the people was really the truth why are there still so many hospitals and so many pharmacies now they will tell you that because the people don't have faith but you have, if i have faith it means that i believe in myself because faith means to be loyal to the unseen so when i have a vision when i have a thought when i have a dream when i have a goal i have to believe in it so i have to believe in myself so my brother and my sisters, faith is basically teaching you to believe in your invisible self. Not in a power outside of yourself, not in a man in the sky because it doesn't have any man that lives in the sky. So I'm saying all of this to show you that even um, the same Kenny Copeland would have asked the people in the time of coronavirus to go by the church door and push the envelope with the money under the door. But yet, these signs are supposed to follow them. They're supposed to heal the sick. They're supposed to raise the dead. If they drink anything deadly, it shouldn't harm them. But because the Bible is not literal, and it is secular history, that is why none of them can perform such a thing. If the Bible is literal, just think about the law of reproduction that every seed and every species reproduce after its own kind. If there was a man 2,000 years ago, a literal man 2,000 years ago with special powers, as in the Jesus they fed the world with, that, that Crawford Dalla and, and Kenneth Copeland and these kind of prosperity preachers are feeding the people with to keep them blind. If it was so, okay, and he gone away, and now he lives in you, in spirit form, and he turned literal water into wine. Why is it that you can't turn water into wine? You see, and that's the reason why I have a book on the internet called How to Turn Water to Wine. On Amazon, you can check it out. And why is it that they can't walk on literal water? Because it's not true. You see, you cannot check the laws of the universe. Whatever life is in the sea, that's the fruit it will bring forth. Whatever life in you, that's the life will bring forth. And I'm saying that the Creator is in everyone. The Creator power is in everyone. The same power that puts me to sleep and wake me up is the same power that is in everybody in the world. The Queen in England doesn't have any power more than you. Crepidella doesn't have any more power than you. And, and, and Kenny Copeland do not have more power than you. Everyone have the same power. So when Crawford and, and, and Kenny Copeland and them say, the Lord told me, they're talking about their mind, tell them. That's what they mean, the intuition, tell them. So I can say the Lord too. I can, I can go around, uh, I can open, I can start a church and just mention the name Jesus. I do not believe in Jesus, but I can say so. And people follow me. They will say I'm preaching Christ. Because see, everyone have gifts and everyone have talent. I can use it to do the same thing like them, but I don't want to do that, my brothers and my sisters. 
I want to let you know how powerful you are. I want you to know that you can create whatever you desire in this world. And you do not have to give a preacher your money to be able to use your imagination to create your reality. So, in essence, my brother, my sisters, I'm encouraging you to look within yourself, not to look outside of yourself. And I'm doing this also that someone, some part of the world, will see this video and learn of Neville Goddard and Abdullah and know why all these prosperity preachers have been, has been able to have so much of things in the materialistic way while there's so many miserable poor people that are following them. So this is the time of a great awakening and this is a time to enlighten the people. And that is why we are bringing this message to the people to wake up because these guys know the principle of the law but none of them have ever experienced the promise and the law can be used by anyone because my brother and my sisters the Bible is not a book of morality you got to wake up from that let me just end by saying this you have to be real dumb to believe that someone can give you permission to have sex without guilt or shame when you are thirsty you drink water to satisfy that desire when you're hungry you eat food to satisfy that desire and the sexual feeling is a natural desire. When you feel horny, it's something natural. And no woman in this world has ever signed a piece of paper to see her period. Yet, the whole world been brainwashed to believe that they can sign a piece of paper and pay the government some money and then they become justified to have sex with all guilt and shame and they use fornication and adultery and make people believe that fornication and adultery have something to do with sex. And most people who think that way, they doesn't even know that the meaning of the word SEX is sacred energy exchange and that everything is energy, vibration and frequency and that everything we do in this world, it's all sexual. When you understand the, the true meaning of it, okay? And so with all of that being said, my brother, my sister, that's the reason why I wrote a book also called The Truth About Marriage and you need to know these things and that's why I'm mentioning these things for you. Because at the end of the day, what shall the profit a man if he gain this whole world and loses his soul? It, which means, if you do not know who you are, if you never find your true essence, what good will it be if you gain this whole world, if you get all the things you need? There's a reason why you can't take none of it back with you. So my brother and my sister, we're here to solve each other. We're here to uplift each other. We're not here to calm them. We're not here to pull them. We're not here to put people in different classes. We're not here to be self-righteous. We are here to support each other because we are one. Just like your body made up of millions and millions and millions of cells to become the one you, so to all of us, there's one race which is the human race. So it is time for us to put a stop to these people. I don't even want to call them locusts, but they're acting like locusts, feeding on the life of others, just drying the very life out of others, like vampires, just sucking the blood from others. But I'm here to speak the truth, because you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And that is why I'm doing this video. So more people around the world will be following all of these preachers would know more about Neville Goddard and his teaching and how he was taught by Abdullah the black mystic from Ethiopia, our ancestor. So with that, me said, I want to say peace, love you all, I'm out.